Hey guys, how's it going? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So this video is all about crowdfunding. So crowdfunding is becoming a more and more popular way to kickstart and get going technology projects developed by individuals or small companies. And it has its risks and its benefits. And often people can get swept up in the hype of a new project that's listed for crowdfunding and actually not take into account the dangers and drawbacks that they may be buying into. I have a lot of experience in crowdfunding. I've actually run three successful crowdfunding events myself in the past, and I've been involved in lots of crowdfunding projects. So I know how they can go well and also how they can start to fail. And it all comes down to the actual individual. A crowdfunded project is a promise. So for example, when you buy a 3D printer off Kickstarter, you're pledging for that company or, or individual to produce that machine. And often the planning involved to get to that end stage hasn't been fully thought out. So there may be hurdles or unexpected manufacturing costs down the line. And when it comes down to the crunch, your pledge is little more than a donation to that company. They are not legally required to deliver the product that you've pledged for. Although this is actually changing slightly, crowdfunding is still pretty much pledging your support for something, not guaranteeing a pre-order for that product. I hate to be doom and gloom about it, a lot of awesome projects have come from crowdfunding projects like the Form 1. Form 1 is one of the lowest cost SLA printers you can get and it was launched on crowdfunding for millions of dollars worth of crowdfunded money. But it had delays, unexpected costs and the first machines, the first gen Form 1s had a lot of issues. So they've now resolved that with Form 1 Plus but it's been many years on so the early adopters were slightly stung with the crowdfunding campaign. It's not just limited to crowdfunding though. If you buy a machine from a small company and the promise is to be delivered in something like six or eight weeks, that delay can quickly stretch. I have personally experienced this with a company called Lumen Lab. Lumen Lab pretty much don't exist anymore, but they used to sell CNC kits, really nice looking CNC kits. And a couple of years ago, I wanted to get a CNC machine. So I bought their kit. The delays kept coming in. I kept asking where my machine was, and by the end of it, I had to threaten a chargeback with my credit card to actually get them to ship something. The product was pretty rubbish, and I was actually one of the last people to get a product before they went completely dark and disappeared off the face of the planet. So a lot of people ended up getting pretty much scammed by this company. And the thing is, I don't think these individuals on crowdfunding or small companies go out to start scamming people. They're not doing it to sort of make a quick buck. They legitimately, and I believe honestly, want to do this and want to help people, but they don't know what's involved to produce a fully functional product, especially something as complicated as a 3D printer, and bring it to market and produce it properly with mass production. So this is the risk that you run by purchasing machine using a crowdfunding campaign. So I'm not making this video to smear people or companies. I, that's not my intention. I just want to make it aware that when you're pledging for these machines, they might sound like they've got amazing specs and the price is really low and tempting, but you need to know what you're getting into. So there's no better way to show this than demonstrate uh, previous campaigns from something like Kickstarter. So a quick search on Kickstarter for 3D printers reveals so many projects, like heaps and heaps of 3D printing related projects. And so many people are trying to sort of get into this field and jump in and get you know their piece of the pie, which is fair enough. And they're probably all you know very intelligent engineers and product designers, things like that. But a lot of them probably don't understand the details involved in getting a product from concept and working prototype to actual production and delivering it to customers. And this is where usually these projects fall down. I'm not saying this is always the case. Sometimes projects are run by very well skilled teams like the MicroView, which is a very small Arduino with a screen built in. I backed that project and it was delivered on time. It was actually delivered earlier than, than normal. They had a problem with programming them and they actually shipped out replacements before I even had to ask and harass them about it. That project was run beautifully. One project I did follow for quite a while was the Fillerbot. So the Fillerbot was one of the first projects to launch that involved recycling plastic into filament for 3D printing. So Tyler sort of developed this early concept uh, a lot of it was renders and he had some sort of basic extrusions but that was about it and he went on to list this project from day one things started to go wrong unfortunately for him so 
it was actually launched in January 2012, and three, like $32,000 was raised, but if you go to comments, you know, comments range all the way up to 2014, and people are asking where their thing is two years later. So eventually people got refunds, it all got very messy, and I don't think he made any money off I think he actually lost money, because it just wasn't organized from day one, and it wasn't planned out. And that's that. That's the main thing. I don't think these, these guys go into it trying to scam people. They want to make a difference. They want to make a product. But the platform is a bit of is a bit of an illusion. You know, you, you're pledging this money, but really the amount of investment involved to get these products made probably leaves the creators with very little profit, if any at all. Another extreme case is the Buccaneer, which is still raging on. So the Buccaneer earned, you know, raised one and a half million dollars. And it's a little 3D printer that they um, put on Kickstarter. And these comments are recent. These are like an hour ago. Someone saying I have bills to pay, I need that money, you know, I need a refund. They've actually got a refund queue going, which is really sad. Like, I don't think they made anything off this project. The amount of investment into creating these products has obviously completely backfired and it's left people with bad taste in the mouth because I thought they're gonna get this really polished beautiful looking printer like it was one of the sort of the lowest cost entry-level printers on the market that launched on Kickstarter at the time and it's really not delivered to expectations so yeah guys there you have it just my words of advice and warning on taking up Kickstarter and other crowdfunding projects you really have to dig in and find out about the person or the team and find out if they're capable of actually delivering on time, if at all, and making sure it's not some sort of scam. I've come across a lot of scam Kickstarter projects, and I've actually played a part in stopping one. The Lumen Lab team I mentioned before actually launched a Kickstarter project when they were actively ignoring their entire backlog of, of CNC kits they were meant to deliver. So they were going to do this drone and launch it, it was like this sort of drone with camera on, on it, it was like a kit, and it actually became revealed that it was actually just photographs from a Chinese website. Uh, slightly photoshopped that they modified and they were raising heaps of money rent beyond their goal like straight away and Kickstarter was like oh, okay yeah it's fine keep going it was a scam and you know we had to stop it even if things aren't scams you need to be really careful to make sure the people can deliver so my advice is check up on the people like Google the crap out of them find out what past projects have done find out who they are what their skills and experiences are all that sort of thing so like myself as I said, I've done some projects before. I actually have run robot combat competitions. So I've used uh, actually Possible, which is an Australian crowdfunding site, to crowdfund those projects. And I've actually got one going at the moment, if you're keen, in Sydney very soon. So I've got the experience behind running these events. And we only really use it for uh, sort of registrants for the uh, combat robot event. There's no risk really involved. But if you're delivering a physical product, the risks are enormous. You have to make sure it works, make sure it's safe make sure it won't blow up, you know, make sure it actually um, is usable by, by the clients and make sure you deliver it with a healthy profit for yourself at the end. And that's hard to do. So just be careful guys, um, pledging on these really cool sounding projects. But by all means, don't be scared to get involved with crowdfunding your idea. Just make sure you do your research. You know, find out how much the injection molding tool is actually going to cost. Find out how much 10,000 of those Arduino modified boards are actually going to cost before you actually set your money uh, goals on these crowdfunding sites because you will be surprised how much gets eaten up by all the other costs involved and you'll probably end up with very little at the end if you don't account for it. So thanks for watching guys. That wasn't, hopefully it wasn't too negative. It's just um, I, something I wanted to share. I've been talking about it with a lot of people recently and look forward to the Dumpster PC Mark II video coming up soon. I've actually got it all together and I'm just trying to find out a way to get the software onto it because it's not booting from a USB for some reason. So uh, I'm probably going to have to burn a CD for that. But yeah, thanks for watching guys, and see you again here soon on Maker's Muse. Bye.